They are one of the happiest couples in Hollywood, one of comedy's funniest duos, and they have been married for more than 22 years. Wow. So what is Megan Mullally and Nick Offerman's secret to making a relationship last in the complicated celebrity dating scene? In order to understand, let's see how they got together in the first place. By the late 90s, both actors had moved to Los Angeles. The funny thing is, it wasn't even Nick's idea to move. He had a Mexican girlfriend at the time who was sick of the cold Chicago weather and who convinced him to move to sunny California, only to back out later. Can you imagine? She flaked out and disappeared, Nick explained to the Believer magazine. She turned up back in Mexico. I think she is a really successful Mexican actress now, but I already had everything in motion, so I came here by myself. In 1998, Megan was cast as Karen Walker on NBC's sitcom Will and Grace, a role that launched her into TV stardom. Meanwhile, Nick was struggling to get good TV roles. I was starting to get work, but it wasn't remotely satisfying. It was garbage compared to the theater I was doing, he told the believer. I was drinking a lot of bourbon. I was miserable. That's when Nick realized he needed to rejoin the theater scene. He began working in a play for a company called The Evidence Room, where Megan was also cast. She explained that the cast was not welcoming of her at first, including Nick. I was kind of like shunned by the rest of the cast because I think they wanted to ignore me before I ignored them," she told Sundance Channel. It was right after the second season of Will and & Grace and I think they thought I was like a fancy TV girl or something. I was pretty disposed to not be impressed, Nick confessed in the same interview. But when we did the first read through, Megan just stuck out as so hilarious, which is what prompted me to approach her afterwards. But we, uh, we, we were the only two um outsiders everybody else kind of knew each other so we were off to the side together and her casual comments to me she just was filthy immediately so nick sent megan a text asking her to go on a date however the actress did not reply at first he asked for my phone number and i gave him my fax number she explained he sent me a message asking me to go hear some music and i didn't get the message for like two weeks later so for two whole weeks he thought i just totally iced him Luckily for their marriage, Megan ended up getting the message. I thought it was really sweet, and I think we were starting to flirt more during that time, she said. However, she had some doubts about the relationship at first. We're kind of like screwing around doing bits between scenes, and I started thinking that he was really funny, and we were becoming friends, and then one day I thought, wait a minute, is he sexy? Megan initially liked Nick partly because, well, she thought he was 10 years older than he actually was. All the guys I dated up until that point had been like very like muscle-free, androgynous kind of rock drummers, basically gay guys. And, <laughs> and, then, and then this came along and I was like, what is it? I don't even know. When we met, I was 41 and I'd always had younger guys pursue me. And I was really sick of it, Mulally told GQ magazine. And so I met Nick and I thought, oh great, because this guy's like 38. When she found out that her co-star was 29 at the time, she wasn't happy. Megan also didn't want to date somebody she worked with. Speaking of turning back time, aren't you um, nice one. 11 years old, younger than Megan? Oh, yes. wow, uh, that's But doesn't he seem older? Yeah, he does. After rehearsal one night, we went and drove around. I put my hand on hers on the gear shift in the middle and that was very electric, Nick explained. She gave me a stern talking to about how she wasn't about to get involved with somebody she was doing a play with. So it would have to wait until the play closed. And I said, okay, I can handle those terms. And then we, we both sort of said, oh, wait a second. Or, do I want to kiss this Ooh. hilarious queen of the fairies? Mm, and you did. Yes, I do. You wanted to. For a long time. <laughs> However, Nick didn't have to wait that long. That same night, the couple parked the car and made out for two hours. On the opening night of their play, the couple made out again, only this time somebody saw them. The cat was out of the bag, said Megan, who explained that they decided to take things slow at first. And then we were dating. Then I wouldn't let him come to my apartment. Then I would let him come in, but he had to sleep on the couch. And then he could sleep on the bed, but we still hadn't had sex yet. By the time we did, it was long anticipated and well worth the wait. Nick has talked about how dating Megan helped him get out of the dark place he was in. He was sleeping on a couch in a friend's unfinished basement. The actor remembers he told himself, Oh, if you want this relationship to last, you really have to clean up your act, because right now you're kind of a stinky hog-like human. He went on to say, 
I feel like I was partly looking for this relationship because it saved my life. After going on a few dates, the couple decided to make it official in the year 2000. It was actually Megan who asked Nick out during a concert. There were fireworks, both literal and figurative, the actor told GQ. That was the first time Megan invited me to be her boyfriend. The relationship not only helped Nick's personal life, but also his career. In 2001, he played a plumber on an episode of Will and & Grace, and even got to kiss Megan. During this time, it was the actress who was getting more roles and more success in her career. The comedy duo had an extremely happy relationship, which led Nick to propose in 2002, when they had been dating for 18 months. The actor has explained that, in true comedian fashion, he actually fake proposed three times as a joke. He brought three disposable rings, fabricated by the Will & Grace costume designer, to a trip to Paris. Then, he dropped the fake rings from some of the most memorable places in the city, like the Eiffel Tower or the Pont Neuf. I thought it was hilarious, Mullally told Playboy magazine. But the rings got progressively bigger, and for a moment I thought the last one might be real. Nick actually proposed to her on a trip to London during a romantic walk at Queen Mary's Rose Garden. We were, we were in London, which is our favorite city in, in the world, and it's very romantic for us. We were in Regent's Park. There's a little Japanese garden. Yeah. And uh, I, I had prepared a handmade uh, walnut box in the shape of a heart. The couple married in 2003. Instead of a traditional wedding, they decided to do their own thing and turn it into a surprise for their friends and family. They threw a party on September 20th, the day before the Emmy Award ceremony. The guests found out it was actually their wedding only after they arrived. After marrying, the actors moved together to a house in Hollywood Hills. Like marriage is making a promise to each other, not just, you know, that we're gonna trudge through this shitty life together. It's saying, I found you and I'm going to make you the, mo the most special person in my life for the rest of it. The following years, Megan continued getting huge success in her career. Nick was happy supporting her, even if he wasn't getting as many roles. He even moved to New York with Megan when she got a role in the Young Frankenstein Broadway musical in 2008. The following year, the actor got his big break thanks to her role on NBC's sitcom Parks and Recreation. Nick told Backstage Magazine that he talked to the producers of the show about having Megan in the cast as well. I said, I don't know if you guys know this, but I happen to be married to a comedy legend. And they said, well, yes, we were aware of that, so we definitely need to get her on the show. So Megan got a recurring role playing Tammy 2, the ex-wife of Nick's character. Nick gained a lot of popularity, and Megan was already famous, so fans started getting very invested in their relationship. Both comedians used the occasion to make funny jokes about each other on interviews and social media, turning into Hollywood's most fun pairing. Ever since, they help each other get parts and promote each other's projects. Nick has talked about how his marriage has helped him during his career. Megan is 10, 11 years older, and she has hit all these high watermarks, he told backstage. There's a real open student-teacher relationship where Megan is years ahead of me as far as the work she's done, and was on top of the game long before I was. It's like having a master teacher at home. We met working together in a play, but right. in TV and film, she was sort of a hero to me. I mean, she's kind of a modern comedy legend. In the same interview, Megan said, I started Will and Grace when I was 39, and Nick started Parks and Rec when he was 39, and he's really on the same trajectory. It's all happening with the same timing. Well, it's great that they both have made it work. Today, the comedy duo has been together for 22 years. They have co-written a book called The Greatest Love Story Ever Told, and have a podcast called In Bed with Nick and Megan. They have also starred on several TV and movie projects together. We all know it's hard to last in the complicated Hollywood dating scene, especially while working together. So how do they do it? Well, first of all, they have both said they love working together and that it actually enriches their relationship. People often say to us, are you crazy? I can barely stand my spouse at home every day after work. How can you choose to go to work with her? Megan told USA Today. And we say, well, that sounds really sad for you because we just like each other. Although they love working together, they have both agreed to put their relationship above everything else, including work. We have a rule that we will never do a job that will keep us apart for more than two weeks, Nick said during an interview with GQ. Any, any marriage uh, is like a garden. You have to pull the weeds and fertilize the soil <laughs> if you want to enjoy the delicious tomatoes.
the actors don't have any children, which they think might have even helped their relationship. In 2017, Megan said, We tried for about a year or so, and it didn't happen, and took that to mean it wasn't meant to be. When talking about their day-to-day -day lives, the pair has clarified that they are actually, well, a normal couple. One of the things that made us click is that we are simple, boring people, Nick told Parade. We cling to each other. We go home and read books and put together jigsaw puzzles and play cards to protect ourselves from the craziness of this business. It's clear that Nick and Megan have made their relationship work by doing their own thing and not sticking to Hollywood rules or by what anyone else thinks. Here at Rumor Juice, we can't help but wish them many more years of happiness. Be well and be kind.